Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and welcome to my YouTube channel. You get lots of stand-up and hang out 10 cats and clips and compilations. Uh, you get laughs, I get money. This could not be a more pleasant arrangement. Enjoy. I was doing a gig a couple of weeks ago. I got talking to a girl in the front row, I asked her her name. She said it's Pataka. I said, that's an unusual name. You don't hear that every day. To which she replied, actually, I do. <laughs> My father used to say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Till the accident. <laughs> Feminists say, and you may agree with this, you may not. Feminists say, a woman's work is never done. Maybe they got themselves organised a bit better. <laughs> it's a bit of an icy stare you give me there, madam. <laughs> what you've got to understand is that's postmodern misogyny. That joke is, in fact, steeped in irony. So don't you worry your pretty little head about it, love. <laughs> I had one of those serious relationship conversations the other week with my girlfriend where she sat me down and talked at me for about six hours. <laughs> I hadn't realised until then that when a man says he is spoken for, that is quite literally what he means. <laughs> she said to me, she said, Jimmy, we're at a crossroads in our relationship. Down one road is hard work and commitment, but ultimately, happiness. And down the other road, well, the other road is a dead end. And I said, that's not a crossroads, that's a T-junction. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you laughed. She went fucking mental. <laughs> As I'm sure you all would have ascertained, I'm quite middle class. And I'm from the home counties. So I don't have an accent. This is just how things sound when they're pronounced properly. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being working class these days. Being working class is very much like masturbation. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, it's nothing to be proud of either. <laughs> and both give you calluses on your hands. <laughs> Sting, the popular singer, Sting's often bragging about his eight-hour night sex sessions with his wife, Trudy. Imagine how long he'd be able to keep it up if she was a looker. <laughs> In Japan, they believe that tiger penis improves fertility. But I think, if you really want to get pregnant, you're best off using a man's cock. <laughs> My best mate's girlfriend is six months pregnant. They said, you want to feel the baby? <laughs> on reflection, I think they meant on the outside. <laughs> they say travel broadens the mind. Except with Americans, which tends to widen the arse. <laughs> a lot of people quote the fact that only 10% of Americans have passports. The thing is, they say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, I've got nothing against Americans. Just one came up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago and said he thought I was patronising. <laughs> I said, well, I think you'll find that's pronounced patronising. <laughs> it means when you talk down to someone. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not being condescending. I'm far too busy thinking about important things you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Did you know you're ten times more likely to get mugged in London than you are in New York City? because you don't live in New York City. <laughs> See, my favourite news story of the last year came from America. I'm sure you all saw this story in the papers or on TV. It was a story about a man in Utah, an American man, who uh, he was out rambling in the wilds of Utah, the beautiful desert landscape, and there was a rock fall, and he got his hand trapped underneath a massive boulder, and he had to sever his own hand in order to walk to freedom. Incredible story about human courage and spirit. Did you all see that story? Well, I can't believe anyone saw it and didn't ask themselves the question because they think it does beg the question, would I be able to do that? I've given it quite a lot of thought and I think, yes, yes, I would be able to do that. What do I care about an American's hand? <laughs> if it's life or death, I'll cut his fucking head off. <laughs> the other story that sort of tickled me from America, not quite as inspiring, I'll be absolutely honest with you, was the story of an English woman and an American man. This made the papers earlier in the year. They were flying from JFK to London Heathrow, never met each other before, flying in first class. They just knew each other for eight hours, and they were arrested as they came into land at Heathrow. And the reason they were arrested was because the lady was fellating the man. I mean, sucking off. <laughs> yes, as they came into land, the lady was fellating the man. I, myself, prefer a boiled sweet. <laughs> I just can't quite imagine how that happened. <laughs> Presumably, at some point, she turned to him and said, my ears are popping. 
have you got a boiled sweet? <laughs> and he said, no, no, I haven't, but I've got an idea. <laughs> well, let's crack on, shall we? Uh, good evening, you well? Yeah! Fantastic. I've been described as the hardest working man in comedy. Not that impressive, is it? <laughs> the hardest working man in comedy. That's like being the best looking guy in the Burns unit. No offence to any Burns victims we go in. Are there any in? If there's one, there'll be fucking loads. They tend to stick together. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Someone came up to me outside and went, I thought you'd be younger. I said I was. <laughs> I'm 40 years of age, but girls still check me out. I wouldn't mind, but they're so bloody obvious about it, pointing and whispering. Stranger danger. Every night after the show, I have attractive women banging on my dressing room door, and sometimes I let them out. <laughs> Are there any comedy groupies in here this evening? Any gag hags? Any chuckle fuckers? <laughs> the only reason I ask is if any girls come up to me after the show looking for sex, I'm going to have to disappoint you. I mean, we can have sex. <laughs> Just it will be quite disappointing. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you, it'd be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway. More information than some of you wanted, okay. <laughs> I'm a stand-up comedian, a TV host, an actor, and a writer. People ask me, what's your secret? I'm the M4 rapist. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I've never been wrongly accused of rape. <laughs> we all like a laugh, yes? Yes! Yeah. That's the one thing we've all got in common in this room. We all like a laugh. It's a very British thing, I think, to come out of an evening with the express intention of just having a laugh. Here's a great fact about this country. The average person in Great Britain laughs out loud ten times a day. Not everyone, obviously. If you work in a hospice or with learning disabled adults, it could be ten times that. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Yeah, that's my laugh, which is... <laughs> I, somebody, someone said my laugh was weird. My laugh isn't weird, it's wrong. Because <laughs> you're meant to laugh on an out-breath, aren't you? You're meant to laugh on a ha-ha, ha-ha-ha-ha. I laugh on an in-breath, so it's ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> Sounds like a goose being interfered with. <laughs> someone asked me the other day, is it fake? Why would you fake that? Ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> 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 They say that laughter is the best medicine, so maybe, just maybe, if we all keep laughing at people in wheelchairs... <laughs> I'm a dreamer, what can I tell you? I was at a show recently, I don't know if anyone's had this experience, I was at a show watching a band and uh, standing just under the fire escape, uh, watching a band play, pint on with a mate, relaxing, and a lady from the venue came up to us in the little waistcoat and the little name badge came up and went, excuse me, you're going to have to move, because if there's a fire, you're blocking the exit. I said, I tell you what, love, if there's a fire, I'll move. <laughs> what did she think I was going to do in the event of a fire? Just stand there going, nobody move. <laughs> Why has everything gone orangey and hot? I don't like it. <laughs> oh, mobile phones off. I should have said that uh, at the top of the show. Mobile phones off. As a courtesy to the other patrons in the auditorium, uh, I say mobile phones. What I mean there is phones. No one's brought a landline, have they? <laughs> and let's face facts, the landline is dead. When the landline goes in our house, there's panic. <laughs> Shit the bed, who the fuck is that? We're both here. <laughs> a lot of people text whilst driving. I'm not excusing it, but we've all done things we regret when we're drunk. <laughs> I saw a thing on the news that said that bad drivers are going to get on the spot £100 fines. I thought, it's a bit sexist. <laughs> Do you understand that? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I'm not being sexist. How could it be? Some of my best friends are slags. <laughs> <laughs> is, it now, is this sexist? You could be the judge on this. Sorry for being rude, but do you think chat-up lines are sexist? No, they're not. They're fun, right? They're, I know they're cheesy, but they're meant to be cheesy. That is their charm. What's that one? I like that one. Um, get your coat. It's cold in the boot of my car.
Well, thanks very much. I always feel slightly guilty at the beginning of a show because you all clapped and whooped. I've done nothing so far. <laughs> I just walked from over there. It was easy. Anyone could have done it. You could have done it. Maybe not you, but most of <laughs> most people could have done it. I always feel quite guilty because you've given so much, I've done so little. What if I'm shit? <laughs> Don't panic, I'm not. <laughs> Close to comedy genius. <laughs> the Guardian. <laughs> It's a newspaper for teachers, I don't expect you to understand. <laughs> I went for a wander around earlier. Someone came up to me and went, well, see your last show. I said, oh, thanks very much. And then he added, at least I hope it was your last show. <laughs> With your fucking mates. <laughs> people often ask me how I do this for a living. How do you get up in front of people for an hour and a half or two hours and tell them jokes? It must be petrifying. Well, the secret is, yeah, what you do, if you're doing any kind of public speaking, this really works. What you do, you imagine the people you're talking to are naked. Yeah, it really works. A couple of things to remember. Firstly, don't tell the people you're talking to that's what you're doing. because that could be a little bit creepy. <laughs> and secondly, it doesn't work as well if you work in a primary school. <laughs> Someone came up to me and said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you look like Jimmy Carr. <laughs> How am I supposed to not take that personally? That's my face. <laughs> That's all I've got to work with. I realise I've got quite a broad face. I've got quite good girth on my face. And girth is not a term traditionally associated with an attractive face. <laughs> you know those things you get by the seaside? The big cardboard cutout thing by the seaside? Big fat jolly man in an all-in-one red and white striped suit running down Skegness Beach. You know the one? And they cut the face out so you can stick your head through, take a hilarious holiday photo. Well, when I stick my head through one of those, it just looks right. <laughs> I wish that wasn't funny. <laughs> I wish they didn't ring true, but sadly... <laughs> I bought a rape alarm... ..cos I kept on forgetting when to rape people. <laughs> They're bloody marvellous. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about behind the scenes. Not behind the scenes here at the Bloomsbury Theatre, cos there's fuck all going on back there. <laughs> but behind the scenes more generally. You know in television commercials, when they use chimpanzees to advertise tea and whatnot, because we'll buy anything if chimpanzees are involved, because chimpanzees are adorable. Well, what they do when they're filming a commercial with chimpanzees is they give the chimpanzees peanut butter. And the peanut butter sticks to the roof of the mouth of the chimpanzee. Makes the chimpanzee go... Because <coughs> they're not used to the peanut They quite like it, but they're not used to it, so it makes them go... <coughs> makes it look as if the chimpanzee is talking. Well, that's also how they make Hollyoaks. <laughs> Interesting fact for you. Are you having to explain that to her? <laughs> oh! It's clearly a mixed ability group. <laughs> I told my best friend I fucked his wife and got her pregnant. That cured his hiccups. <laughs> I'm in a long-term relationship. Who else here is in a long-term relationship? Give us a shout. <laughs> oh, loads of, you sound thrilled. <laughs> I've been with the same girl for eight years and we're very happy together, but how's this for mental? She still gets annoyed if I use her toothbrush. That's mental, isn't it? When you consider how intimate we've been over those eight years. And if you can tell me a better way to get dog shit out trainers... <laughs> I'd love to fucking hear about it, cos there's nothing final. <laughs> Dog excrement can blind a child. But it's much easier just to use a finger. <laughs> if you really want to be sure, smear dog shit all over both fingers. <laughs> From the shoulder, jab. <laughs> there are a lot of obese children in Britain today. But focus on the positive, the pensions crisis is over. <laughs> Come on, those tubby little fucks aren't going to see 40. Never mind 65. Quite a lot of young people in. If you're young 
and your parents are getting divorced, it can be a very difficult time. But remember, it's not your fault. Your mum's a slag. <laughs> Pretty bad being told you're adopted, but not as bad as being told you're going to be adopted. <laughs> Did you know, if your ears are burning, it means people are talking about you. Generally, they're saying, he's on fire. <laughs> are you all familiar with Simon Cowell? Do you know Simon Cowell? Yeah. Simon Cowell spends £500,000 every year on his own personal security. That's an extraordinary amount of money, isn't it? Half a million pounds a year on personal security. Has Simon not considered being less of a cunt? <laughs> what happened there? You were saying that you liked my joke? Well, thanks very much. <laughs> it's very nice of you. I was chatting to these men that were having a conversation in front of you, but that's fine. You've, <laughs> you've caught my eye now. What do you do, for, madam? I work for Nationwide. You work for Nationwide in Human Resources? I imagine you've been saying to people, well, you're fired quite a lot recently. <laughs> we have done fucked up the country. Fuck off. <laughs> right, good on you. Human Resources, the, the lady sciences. I was talking about Simon Cowell there. Simon Cowell, uh, people knock the X Factor and they knock Britain's Got Talent, but the way I see it, someone's got to turn the Christmas lights on in Stoke. <laughs> and it's not going to be me <laughs> again this year. <laughs> I'm 36 years of age. You know what that means? It means the only way I get to be described as young now is if I die. <laughs> I think you know you're getting old. I was watching porn last week. I found myself thinking... That bed looks comfy. <laughs> the worst thing about being told you've got Alzheimer's is it doesn't just happen the once. <laughs> and I'll be telling that joke again later on. <laughs> if I remember. Of course, a lot of people try and fight the ageing process. A lot of people use anti-wrinkle creams. Anyone here use anti-wrinkle cream? Yeah. A few, a few of you. Is that a fella up there? <laughs> you know they're meant to be wrinkly. Now, my question to the ladies that use the anti-wrinkle cream, if it really works, how come you've still got fingerprints? <laughs> yeah, that's right, I made you look a fool. <laughs> I saw a thing on the cover of Elle magazine, you're all familiar with Elle magazine for the ladies, it said on the cover, what to buy and how to wear it. Buy a dress and zip it up, you fucking moron. <laughs> kind of idiots are reading Elle magazine. Who's standing in a newsagent, naked, thinking, help? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honour and a privilege to be here. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, well done, me. I went out earlier to get a cup of coffee. Someone came up to me and said, are you Jimmy Carr or do you just look like Jimmy Carr? I said, both. <laughs> you know when you go around to a friend's house for the first time and they say to you, did you find it OK? <laughs> what are you meant to say? <laughs> no, I'm still lost. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm posh. Who here thinks I'm posh? Well, compared to you, yes. <laughs> but I'm not as posh as people think. I actually went to one of the roughest colleges in Cambridge. <laughs> fame is weird. I'm at a very weird level of fame now, where people come up to me and say hello to me in the street. Yeah, it's very flattering, it's lovely. But then they'll insult me when they're talking to me. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll say things like, you're not as fat as you look on TV. <laughs> you mean not as fat? <laughs> well, this is my favourite. They, uh, they go, you're actually quite funny. <laughs> now they're saying, imagine my surprise, you're not totally fucking shit. <laughs> So I'm flattered they've said hello, but then I'm angry they've insulted me. So I'm angry and flattered at the same time. Those are weird emotions to have at the same time. So I try and do the same thing back. I say, well, you're a super little cunt. <laughs> I keep on getting mistaken for Alan Carr. So what I've done is I've stopped sucking men off. <laughs> That was my hand symbol for no more cock. 
I don't quite know what that round of applause was for. <laughs> was that you thinking that's a very funny joke or homosexuality is just about willpower? <laughs> People often ask me, what were you like at school? So I tell them, I was a little black girl. <laughs> There's about half of you laughing, half of you thinking, was he? <laughs> you would never know. Wetting your bed is embarrassing as a child, but as an adult, <laughs> wetting a child's bed is mortifying. <laughs> it's almost impossible to explain that shit away. <laughs> well, it's early on in the evening. Let's try some easy jokes to start with, shall we? Good luck. <laughs> I was in the south of France. I saw a brownie on a school trip. She was holding up a book. It said on the front, rough guide. I thought, yeah, she's not a looker. <laughs> That's the easiest joke in the show. <laughs> if you don't get that, you might as well fuck off now, mate. <laughs> Three percent of Britons never leave a tip, and they're known as the weirdos that live at the tip. <laughs> I saw a headline, it said, Britain faces crisis. I thought, what, we're running out of faces? <laughs> when someone recommends a book to me and they say, it's a page turner, I always think, yeah, I know how books work. <laughs> I bought a home pregnancy kit. Turns out my house is pregnant. <laughs> we're thrilled, we're having a shed. <laughs> I got interviewed last week by a very nice young lady. She said, what's your house like? I said, I've got a semi. <laughs> Which would have been fine, but then I showed it to her. <laughs> and of course, by then, it wasn't a semi. <laughs> if you ask ten randomly chosen women how often they wash their knickers, a surprising number answer, how did you get in here? <laughs> Treat them mean, keep them keen. That's what they say, isn't it? Treat them mean, keep them keen. But I think you've gone too far if you're using a Stanley knife. <laughs> of course, a lot of women stay with their men, even if their men hit them. A lot of women will stay with their husbands, even if their husbands beat them. I tell you what they need. A slap. <laughs> Where's your self-esteem? <laughs> Silly cow. She was tiny. <laughs> Of course, the thing people never say about domestic violence, and it strikes me as being just so very obvious, but people never say this about domestic violence, is just how fucking stupid it is. <laughs> I mean, you're hitting your wife. It's your wife. <laughs> you might as well key your own fucking car. <laughs> Think about it. You don't like her now, you're not going to like her anymore with two black eyes and a bit of a face on, are you? <laughs> According to Ofcom, the people that make the guidelines for television, according to Ofcom, the most offensive words on TV are the F word and the C word. But I'm live on stage this evening, so I can say whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> and those cunts can't do anything about it. <laughs> I had trouble getting out tonight. Had to organise a babysitter. Uh, I don't have children. <laughs> Just found they're a lot cheaper than escorts. <laughs> She's 17, there's nothing she won't do for 50 pounds. <laughs> sort of half a joke, that, isn't it? Because it's quite funny, but also true. <laughs> when I'm away from home, I sometimes get lovesick. Well, they call it chlamydia. <laughs> I spend a lot of my time away from home, because this is my job. I travel around the country telling jokes to people, I love it. But I spend a lot of my time away staying in hotels, because I have to travel. I was in a hotel a couple of weeks ago, walked into the hotel room. As I walked in there, just on the TV, it said, the adult channel is disabled. <laughs> I thought, that's a bit specialist. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen this, Birmingham. On trains, they've got seats reserved for elderly, disabled and pregnant people. Begs the question, who's fucking all these old cripples? <laughs> Do you ever hear anything so dumb, it's almost brilliant? So stupid, it just it takes you a moment to work out what just happened. I'll give you an example. I was on a bus, I heard this girl get on the bus, walk up to the driver and go, can I get a return? And the driver went, where to? And she went, back here. <laughs> it took me like an extra beat to, oh, what's going on? Oh, she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> People worry about their physical appearance. We've all got silly hang-ups. Personally, I worry that one of my balls is bigger than the other two. <laughs> I shave my testicles. 
I call them Brazil nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me giggle. Because it tickles when I do it. The first few weeks of joining Weight Watchers, you're just finding your feet. <laughs> well done. Altogether or not at all on the laughter, I think. Feed line, punch line, laugh. Don't fuck about. You're getting it late nonsense. Um, are there any ginger people in tonight? We got any ginger people? Yes. You seem to have contained the problem there. Good. <laughs> ginger people get given a hard time. People say very unkind things about gingers, but I think you should be destroyed humanely. <laughs> I can talk. Check out the look I'm rocking. I look like a Lego Hitler. <laughs> That's his style. <laughs> when I broke up with my last girlfriend, I said, I said, I blame myself. I should never have let you let yourself go. <laughs> but you have, so you have to fuck off. Good. Well, you seem more excited than me and I've seen the fucking show. <laughs> Good manners are disappearing. When I was a lad, it was considered polite to tap a lady on the head before ejaculating. <laughs> I know. You know why kids wear their trousers slung low with no belt? It's because they're dicks. <laughs> True story. I attempted suicide once. Came pretty close. Killed the guy standing next to me. <laughs> it's all right, it was a goth. It's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Whenever my girlfriend says, fucking men, I always think, yeah, that is the alternative. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, sorry? Tosser. Tosser. Right. <laughs> Just around, just toss up. <laughs> yeah, you know you're in fucking Glasgow, don't you, where someone pays you 22.50 to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Fair enough, fill your boots. Um, <laughs> on average, in the Northern Hemisphere, January is the coldest month of the year. But if you were in Australia, you'd be surrounded by cunts. Any Australians in? Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you why there's no women's boxing. The way in. <laughs> the fight would happen then and there. <laughs> per square inch of head, people with red hair have 750 fewer friends than normal people. <laughs> A lot, isn't it? Are there any redheads in? Uh. <laughs> I think I'm all right if I look away. <laughs> My partner recently lost 11 stone. Well, I say that, I left her. <laughs> Fat cow. A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I'm Jimmy Carr, one of the biggest faces in British comedy. Literally. I've got one of the biggest faces. Look at that, it's like the moon. It'll be affecting your menstrual cycle just being this close. <laughs> When I told my mum I wanted to grow up and be a comedian, she said, you can't do both. 
<laughs> and she's right, being a comedian makes you quite immature. I'm sort of like a 14-year-old boy trapped inside a man's body. Not in a Michael Jackson way. <laughs> because he's a child at heart, not because he fucks kids. <laughs> he definitely doesn't for legal reasons so <laughs> I should warn you this isn't a show for the easily offended it's not even a show for people that are quite difficult to offend <laughs> essentially this is a show for people without a moral compass <laughs> and that's why it's nice we've got a couple of chavs down the front hello <laughs> I had this amazing cab driver he was driving a black cab he was whistling yeah smiling clearly having a brilliant time he said I love my job I'm my own boss nobody tells me what to do I said left here <laughs> Are you all right in the back? Hey! Excellent. It's ni nice to hear that, because often when I go to comedy shows, and I go to them all the time, I love coming out to see live comedy. The thing is, though, if I'm sat right at the back, I'm a little bit disappointed. I always get my ticket and go, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm fucking miles away. <laughs> but there are, of course, advantages to being right at the back. You get more of a sense of theatre, of people coming together and sharing a sense of humour. What a wonderful thing that is, the great British musical spirit. And also, if you're right at the back, this sort of thing won't happen. I fucked your mum. <laughs> That's not going to happen to any of you. I've got nothing but respect for your mums. They're hard-working, decent women. Your mum still owes me a tenner. <laughs> I'm joking. I owe her a tenner. <laughs> Bluff. I'm your real dad. <laughs> Kidding, no-one knows who your real dad is. <laughs> that isn't your mum there, is it? <laughs> Sorry. This is a bit awkward. Uh, <laughs> hello, sir. <laughs> She's brilliant in bed, isn't she? <laughs> uh, what, what, sorry? I don't remember her. What, that's the thing that annoys you? <laughs> Not the fact that I fucked your mum, the fact... <laughs> you don't even remember fucking my mum. Well, thankfully, you all seem to be laughing. You all seem to have taken that quite well. What's what your name, sir? Uh, Julio. <laughs> Julio? Yeah. How, d how did you know you were having a gay? <laughs> i tell you what, I'll call him Julio. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend, or beard, as I like to call her? <laughs> Well done. It's almost like you're protesting too much. <laughs> Sorry, you're clearly getting a bit of a hard time. But, you know, you can't, you're smiling through it because at a comedy gig you're expecting people to be a bit, you know, there's a little bit of banter. You maybe weren't expecting that. <laughs> but you're expecting a bit of banter. The problem comes when you do this for six or seven days in a row and then you find yourself back in the real world doing something a bit mundane on a Monday morning. I don't know, maybe buying stamps at the post office. And there's a bit of cheeky banter between you and the lady behind the plexiglass. <laughs> Saw you on TV on Friday night. D did you? What do you think? Well, you've clearly no match for Jonathan Ross. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because I fucked your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, I'll go. <laughs> I saw a proper scientific survey. It said that women can tell if a man wants a baby just by looking at the shape of his face. Presumably, if it's like this... <laughs> that means he doesn't want a baby. And if it's like this, <laughs> it means the conception will involve a turkey baster. <laughs> well, that, that was my gay face. Was that not clear enough? <laughs> Fine, have it your way. <laughs> Sorry, I'd like to apologise for that, Mime. I, I neglected the balls. <laughs> Fine, can I just ask, are you two there? You look quite young. How old are you? 18. You're 18? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I'm really? Yeah. Are you adding six years to your age? <laughs> because you think I might be a fucking idiot? <laughs> You're 18. Yeah. But you've got a growth hormone <laughs> problem, some description. <laughs> Not even. You're genuinely 18. Yeah. God, I've forgotten how young an 18 year old boy looks like. 
that a bad thing to say? It's quite bad, isn't it? <laughs> and your boyfriend? How old is he? <laughs> what? It's my brother. It's your brother? Well, don't shag him then. <laughs> I noticed that your, your shirt, is that a fashion thing? It looks like it's covered in spunk. <laughs> so honestly, on a, stand up and turn around. It's an amazing shirt. It's probably... What? Come on. Look at that! <laughs> right. It's, it's quite a cool design when you look at it closely, but if you just glance at it, it looks like a plasterer's radio. <laughs> That is a term used in the dogging fraternity, I believe. <laughs> As in, I was out the evening with Stan Collymore, I drove away with a car looking like a plasterer's radio. <laughs> well, I should, I suppose, you know, talk about myself a little bit. I grew up in Slough in the 1970s. If anyone wants to know what Slough was like in the 1970s, go there now. <laughs> Actually, I went back recently, there's a sign as you drive in, it says Slough, twinned with Montreux. I'll tell you this much, they're not identical twins. <laughs> There's no chance of getting those mixed up. In fact, the only thing you need to know about Slough is one sign that we've got at the end of the high street. We've got one tourist information sign. Most towns of any note have many. We've just got the one. You know the ones that say, you are here. We've got one that says, you are here, but someone's added a question mark. <laughs> so it now reads, you are here. <laughs> Your travel agent is a cunt. <laughs> I was educated in Cambridge University. Well, done. well ooh, that's not an uncommon response. People think because you went to Cambridge, you're a little bit smug, a little bit up yourself. Not the case. <laughs> the only reason I went to Cambridge is because I got four A's available. <laughs> of course, the only reason I got four A's available is because when I was at school, I didn't have that many friends, and you know, I didn't have a girlfriend, certainly, and so no one would have sex with me. I used to go home every night like a good little boy and do my homework. Yeah. So next time you meet someone who's a bit overeducated and pompous, don't think to yourself, God, they're intimidating. Think, no good with a poontang. <laughs> the great thing about being on TV a little bit is you get asked to do interesting things. I was asked last year to go on Countdown. I couldn't believe my luck. I thought, brilliant, I'll definitely do that. Because I've always had a thing for Carol Waterman. I've always liked her. Not just because she's fit. No. Also for her mind. <laughs> Although that's not what I tend to say. I tend to say I wouldn't mind fucking her brains out. <laughs> Think about it, take ages. <laughs> I'll tell you why there's no women's boxing. The way in. <laughs> the fight would happen then and there. <laughs> per square inch of head, people with red hair have 750 fewer friends than normal people. Come <laughs> on, isn't it? Are there any redheads in? <laughs> uh. I think I'm all right if I look away. <laughs> My partner recently lost 11 stone. Well, I say that, I left her. <laughs> Fat cow. <laughs> let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of, yeah, let's have a round of applause for her. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> <laughs> and so your comment there is, I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out your mouth, is it? weird thing from a quite a tough looking man from Glasgow to say oh you've not made much of an effort <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier <laughs> it's a little bit prison rape coming from you sir <laughs> that's what it feels like my point there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin and all I can say is we've got some very brave girls in here this evening really. <laughs> terrific stuff so there are some stunning looking women in here this evening and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. 
I'm joking. <laughs> no one in here is stunning. <laughs> it's all right to make those kind of jokes in comedy because no one really minds. Because, like, occasionally someone will go, oh, yeah, comedy, it's the new rock and roll. It fucking isn't. I'll tell you how you can tell comedy isn't rock and roll. There's no comedy groupies. <laughs> There's groupies in rock and roll. There's no groupies in comedy. What girl is so into comedy she's going to come backstage and suck me off? <laughs> Well, it might be a premature end to the show. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. <laughs> I'm joking, don't wash her. <laughs> Seriously, now, what, girl, what girl's so into stand-up she's gonna come backstage and suck me off just so she can go... That tastes funny. It's a very fun job. This is all I do for a living, Glasgow. I travel around the country, I find large groups of people with sort of the same sense of humour as me, and then I tell them jokes for the evening. It's a lovely thing to do. It means I get to go everywhere. Any, uh, any Irish people in? <laughs> oh, a few. Not that many. It sounds like, sounds like the roads in Glasgow are very nearly finished. I was, in, I was in Dublin recently doing a show, and I was there with a friend hanging out in Dublin for the day, what could be finer? And he dared me to say this at the end of the show. So right at the end of the show, I went, Dublin, I don't know much about Irish politics. That was pretty much their reaction. <laughs> a couple of thousand people going, I bet you fucking don't, no. <laughs> I said, I don't know much about it, but he dared me to do it, so I had to say it. I said, I don't know much about Irish politics, I just think we should have one island united. <laughs> they were on their feet in Dublin, this guy is all right. And then I added, one island united. Under British rule. <laughs> Mother always said, if you haven't got anything nice to say, fuck off. <laughs> I read an interview with Margaret Thatcher a couple of years ago, and in it she was talking about her funeral. She said, I don't want my funeral to be a morbid affair. I want it to be a celebration. <laughs> I thought, well, you won't be disappointed, love. <laughs> my sister had a baby. I went to see her. She said, do you want to wind him? I said, I'll give him a dead leg, shall I? <laughs> Cats have got nine lives, which makes them ideal for experimentation. <laughs> a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. So do be careful at the office party. <laughs> Watching sex on telly with mum and dad, that's embarrassing. I didn't even know they knew to use the camcorder. <laughs> a very common male fantasy is to have two women at the same time. One to cook, one to clean. <laughs> Easy there, I'm joking. They want to fuck them. <laughs> Have you all seen the new Mel Gibson film? The Passion of the Christ. It's upset an awful lot of Christians. They're, very up, they're up in arms about it. He's, he's made a film about the life of Christ, but he's tacked on this silly Hollywood ending where the hero comes back at the end. Does she love the little baby Jesus, or...? <laughs> Does she love the little baby Jesus or not? Is she, is she going for a wee? Is it a wee or a poo? <laughs> Should we time her? <laughs> Seems a bit embarrassing, isn't it? When people say they hear voices in their heads, as opposed to where, exactly? <laughs> Hearing voices in your legs. That's properly mental. <laughs> I saw an advert for adult literacy classes in the newspaper. <laughs> Are there any single men in this evening? Anyone single? You're, you're single. Well, don't, don't panic. I've got some advice for you. If you really like a girl and you ask her out and she says to you, I love you like a brother, suggest a weekend in Norfolk. <laughs> Unless you're from Norfolk, in which case it probably is your sister. So, are you from Norfolk? You don't look like you're from Norfolk. I'm from Thetford in Norfolk. You're from Thetford in Norfolk. <laughs> and is that your sister, girlfriend, both? <laughs> Sorry, and you're here with your sister? <laughs> Not really, though. <laughs> Saturday night out, I'll take my sister. She's a, she's a looker. Have you ever with the... <laughs> I'm only asking. Do you, think, do you think your sister's attractive, can I ask? <laughs> do, do you think she's attractive or not? 
She's OK. Did you give her one? <laughs> that was very low, sorry. What about you, love? <laughs> I can't believe that. He's from Norfolk. <laughs> and he's brought his sister. <laughs> it could scarcely be better. <laughs> I'm amazed you didn't bring your mum. Did you split up? Marvellous. Imagine your family tree's a straight line, is it? <laughs> well, what I'd like to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is help you. I'd like to become an agony aunt. A and to that end, I went and looked in lots of magazines at the agony aunt column. They're all genuine letters, these, and I went through and I, I thought, well, could I do better agony aunt answers than their agony aunts? And I think in many of the cases, yes, I bloody can. So I'll take you through some examples and then maybe you could share with me some of your problems and I will do my best to sort them out. Of course I will. All you've got to be to be an agony aunt is, is considerate and caring, compassionate. <laughs> My boyfriend loses his erection as soon as he goes anywhere near a condom. We have loads of foreplay and he gets really hard, but as soon as he tries to put one on, he loses it. What can we do? Karen in Cleethorpes. <laughs> now, their response was, have a kiss and a cuddle, try again in 15 minutes. Good luck with that. She's not getting any better looking. <laughs> I've gone for this as an answer. In situations such as these, it's very easy to put the onus of blame onto the male, and this can cause enormous trauma and place unnecessary strain on a relationship. Therefore, it's worth reminding you it's often the woman's fault. <laughs> the penis is, if you will, a barometer of sexual attraction, and if you do not meet its high standards, it's likely you will go without the sex you so cravenly demand. <laughs> Having said that, here are some tips that might help. If your boyfriend wears glasses, perhaps suggest he takes them off for sex. <laughs> Simple but effective. Instead of using condoms, why don't you go on the pill and have weekly AIDS tests? <laughs> <laughs> if you do get AIDS, Lemsip can help, or you could just walk it off. <laughs> this next one's from Woman's Own magazine. I've been with a lovely man for six months. He's just confessed to me that he likes to dress up in women's clothes, and I'm horrified. I feel so let down that I don't know if I can cope. It's from Jackie and Dunstable. I've written back. Pot kettle black, Jackie. <laughs> do you dress as a woman? I bet you fucking do, you hypocrite. <laughs> Regards, Jimmy. Uh, this one requires a little bit of maturity from everyone. My boyfriend isn't really into having me perform oral sex. He says he's just too sensitive and it doesn't feel as good as intercourse. I've asked my other guy friends and they tell me it's weird because all guys like to receive oral sex. Are they right? I'm starting to wonder what's going on. Well, I've written back. If you can't suck a cock, really, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> Have you tried practising nodding at people with your mouth open? <laughs> P.S. Don't neglect the balls. <laughs> this next one is surprisingly succinct when you consider the subject matter. One of my vaginal lips hangs lower than the other. <laughs> Could surgery even them up? I've said yes, but a cheaper alternative is to live as a spinster. <laughs> On that cheery note, do any of you have any problems you would like me to help you with? Anything at all. It can be as mundane as you like or as interesting. It hurts when I wee. <laughs> it, it hurts when you wee. Well, the good news is, sir, you have a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> The, the bad news, the bad news is you've announced that in, in a crowded theatre. <laughs> when you're young, paedophiles are something to laugh at, the local creep. But then you grow up and you have your own kids with their own unique personalities and quirks and difficulties, and it suddenly hits you. What the fuck do these pedos see in these little shits? <laughs> I could do a brilliant Michael Jackson impersonation. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Okay, I just need a young volunteer that can keep a secret. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. What are you getting up for? But wait a second, this is a teachable moment. If a grown man beckons you forth as he undoes his flies, 
This is some stranger danger, son. What's your name? Mikey. Mikey. That, uh, let's hear it from Mikey, everyone. That is, that is, because, you know why? That is commitment to a night out at a comedy show. There's a young man that's just thought to himself, oh, it's the bit of the show where I suck his cock. Great. <laughs> everyone loved Michael Jackson in the 80s, right? He was the coolest guy in the world. Coolest guy in the world, bar none. And really, the high point of that cool was the moonwalk at the Grammys. Remember that? People lost their minds at how cool it was. And really, the moonwalk was no more than... It was that. <laughs> I know I'm not nailing this, but that was... That was the gist of it, right? That was the, that was the coolest shit we'd ever fucking seen. Of course, we didn't realize at the time it had been developed for sneaking in and out of children's bedrooms. We had no idea. <laughs> it's so obvious now. Now, I've never fucked a kid. I nearly did, just then, didn't I? <laughs> but I've never fucked a kid. But if I did fuck a kid, I think I know how I'd leave the room. <laughs> Do you remember the incident in the 90s with Michael Jackson? Where he was on tour in Germany? He had the tall top floor of a hotel, and, and he had the baby, and he held the baby over the balcony, and he shook the baby. <laughs> Crazy. You can't get come off a baby like that. <laughs> Somewhat ironically, that has really separated the men from the boys, hasn't it? <laughs> I beat Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. Cheers. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much for watching. If you like that, there's a, there's a playlist around here somewhere, so, you know, click on that. Enjoy some more.